I'm looking at him as a saint going to a party that ain't nothing but sin. Drinking, maybe fornication. I know he got a contract with Revoke, so I'm just like, it's just real strange that he would be found at any kind of ditty party. Rumors about T.D. Jakes being involved in these various situations and, and so forth. Not to say it's real. No, no, listen. I'm not I saying it's about, real, but T.D. Jakes was trending. And I, I shook my head not to say, that's ridiculous. I shook my head to say, unfortunately, I don't put nothing past nobody no more. T.D. Jakes' history has returned to haunt him. So he isn't quite out of the woods yet. Bishop T.D. Jakes deviated from the pulpit at the center stage of the huge First Baptist Church of Glen Arden International in January. No, he was on the move, pacing back and forth in his sharp dark suit and striped tie, gripping a portable microphone that he alternated between hands. He spoke to the sea of largely black parishioners who had gathered for the yearly revival launch and he also addressed the clergy and choir members stationed on the vast platform. On January 5th, in his trademark captivating way, the Dallas-based televangelist gave a sermon that lifted the spirits of the audience. The Holy Spirit sent me all the way to the DMV to deliver this message. This is your year to pivot, he stated, eliciting cheers and ovation from the Washington DC crowd, many of whom rose to their feet. You need to surround yourself with people who can pivot because they are still following who you used to be, but they must now follow who you have become. Even as he dug into the biblical story of Joshua succeeding Moses, you wouldn't have guessed that only two weeks ago, whispers circulating on social media hinted at future changes in Jake's own leadership role. While some of his ministries and enterprises published statements in response to the gossip, Jake appeared to dismiss the rumors as minor setbacks rather than major issues. Bishop T.D. Jake's impact has grown significantly since his humble beginnings as a storefront pastor in West Virginia. He moved to Dallas in 1996 and founded the Potter's House, which has since grown into a non-denominational megachurch with various facilities and over 30,000 members, according to the Dallas Morning News. Back in 2001, Time magazine focused on the itinerant evangelist, wondering aloud whether he may be the next Billy Graham. Fast forward to now, and he's not only running multiple ministries and enterprises, but also rubbing elbows with top executives and A-list celebrities. However, with vast connections comes considerable scrutiny. Unfortunately, there are some juicy rumors too. Anthea Butler, the University of Pennsylvania's Chair of Religious Studies, expressed her worries in an MSNBC piece in May. She questioned Bishop T.D. Jake's recent decade-long engagement with Wells Fargo and Company, which he claimed was intended to address concerns such as food deserts and housing affordability in Atlanta and elsewhere. In her words, by collaborating with a financial behemoth like Wells Fargo, a corporation frequently accused of racially biased lending practices, Jake's may be unintentionally undermining the very black community he is attempting to elevate. Butler compared the cooperation to sending the fox to defend the hen house. Kelly Cornish became CEO of the TD Jake's Foundation in April, after previously working as a diversity, equity, and inclusion leader at Wells Fargo. She is now leading efforts aimed at making a genuine difference, such as building 300 affordable houses in a new Atlanta complex equipped with stores and schools. In addition, she is working to establish a much-needed grocery shop in an underprivileged area outside of the city. Cornish addressed complaints in a recent interview with Religion News Service, highlighting the necessity of collaboration for meaningful change. She acknowledged previous mistakes but underlined the foundation's dedication to course correction and community impact. Moving on to more recent events. Bishop T.D. Jakes has faced allegations of sexual misconduct at events organized by hip-hop entrepreneur Scene Diddy Combs. There have been unsubstantiated reports, including TikTok and YouTube videos, that Jake engaged in gay sex at these meetings. Furthermore, a talk show presenter accused him of inappropriate behavior toward a young man. He's making the Christians look rather horrible right now. He's making the Christians look real bad right about now. And you've been to these parties, right? Oh, yeah. Uh, 
I was there when he was doing the white parties in the Hamptons and the old nine yards. You know, where people used to go to, you know, separate rooms and different rooms and they wasn't doing that out in the public. You know, so, but now they don't care. Men kissing men and all this other stuff. Juan Jake 66 was unavailable for an interview during the early January revival. He didn't address the claims obliquely during his Christmas Eve sermon, reaffirming his commitment to preaching truth from the platform. He alluded to a future opportunity to address the allegations more openly. When asked for a statement, Jake's ministry answered clearly, calling the charges unfounded and baseless. Jordan A. Hora executive director of public relations and communications for T.D. Jakes Group, T.D. Jakes Ministries, and the Potter's House condemned the spread of misinformation and reaffirmed Jakes' commitment to his global mission of compassion, service, and ministry, despite the challenges posed by such allegations. Derek Williams, T.D. Jakes Entertainment's executive vice president, stepped in to handle Jakes' ties to Scene Diddy Combs the chairman of Revolt Media and TV. This media business announced in 2021 that it would air a sermon series hosted by Jake. Williams stated that during a birthday celebration for Combs, Bishop Jakes, CEO of TD Jakes Entertainment, paid tribute to Combs. They exchanged greetings. Jakes taped a little birthday message and then proceeded to their other scheduled engagements. Williams highlighted that any assertions to the contrary are absolutely unfounded and false. Despite the fact that some of Jake's companies have kept quiet about the claims, a number of his colleagues and associates have come out in favor. Pastor John K. Jenkins, senior of First Baptist Glenn Arden and board chair of the National Association of Evangelicals, who co-hosted the January revival with leaders from DC's Greater Mount Calvary Holy Church lent his support. He denied the allegations, emphasizing Jake's intelligence and reliability. Jenkins responded firmly that Bishop Jake's is too smart to have done what these individuals are accusing him of. Joshua Dubois, CEO of Values Partnerships and a recent collaborator with Jake's on mental health programs for Black and Hispanic men, as well as church leaders, had similar sentiments. In a January interview, he hailed Jakes as a leader who prioritizes long-term facts over transitory cultural disputes. In 2022, Cora Jakes Coleman, Bishop T.D. Jakes' eldest daughter, made news when she filed for divorce from her husband, Richard Coleman. The situation became serious when Richard was accused of sexually assaulting their adopted daughter. Cora and Richard's adventure began with a beautiful wedding ceremony in June 2011, during which her father not only escorted her down the aisle, but also presided. The event drew notice, particularly after photographs circulated of Cora gleaming in custom-made glittering crystal-encrusted Swede Christian Louboutin pumps. Their marriage was not without its difficulties, notably when it came to infertility. Despite their difficulty conceiving, they chose adoption and welcomed two children into their family, Amori, a daughter, and Jason, a son. Because of their candor about their adoption journey, they became motivational speakers, fighting for the destigmatization of adoption. However, in January 2022, Cora surprised many by announcing their separation. In her statement, she underlined the importance of privacy and requested prayers for her own and her children's well-being. At the time, the precise grounds for the divorce remained unknown. Rumors circulated regarding the cause of the separation, with theories ranging from infidelity to pandemic-related stress. However, the scenario took a nasty turn when allegations surfaced claiming Richard had been arrested on child molestation accusations. According to Larry Reed, a renowned Christian blogger, Richard was arrested for assaulting their adopted daughter, who was just 13. Sources close to the family suggested that the abuse may have gone beyond unwanted touching. Richard was arrested on the evening of May 4th, following significant claims that shook the community. Was arrested on the evening of May 4th, following significant charges that rocked the community. So, is T.D. Jakes what he claims to be? Let me know in the comments.